Did Nike ruin Kobe Bryant Mamba Week? And if so, did they do it on purpose? Before we get into today's topic, if you've never seen me before, my name is James, and I do reviews on sneakers, gear, and sports-related items. If you guys could do me a big favor and smash that like button for me, it really does help with the YouTube algorithm and puts my videos out in front of more people. And if you're new to the channel, maybe you've seen some videos before and just haven't yet hit that subscribe button, please hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you're notified every time I drop a video and you don't miss any content. So this Mamba Week thing, man, like, it, it's crazy. I've never seen so many people just mad and upset and hurt about products being released than I have this week. And, you know, these are people like myself that take L's on a pretty normal basis. Um, so I just want to stress before I get into detail what I want to talk about today that these are just my opinions. I don't know any of this for a fact, but the evidence kind of speaks for itself, to me at least. This whole Mamba Week... You know, there's been so many just upset people and so much backlash directed at Nike that, you know, I kind of waited to put this out because I, I thought maybe that they would change some of the things that they had planned. But, you know, as we all know, you know, they started out, you know, they had five shoes that they were releasing and, you know, they had that, that jersey, that City Edition, Kobe Bryant with the number eight on the front and the 24 on the back. And they were releasing all this stuff and um, everybody was excited for it, you know, everybody loves Kobe Bryant. In the 90s, you know, it was all MJ. Michael Jordan was God, and, you know, nobody's ever going to come close to him, no matter what they do. You know, not LeBron, not even Kobe himself. But if there's anybody close to Michael Jordan, it was Kobe Bryant. And Kobe Bryant was a beloved star, and his untimely death really affected a lot of people. And, you know, he had a lot of fans all over the world that just wanted a piece of his, you know, his, his legacy. And this is all still fresh in our minds. Like, he just died eight months ago. So, you know, this is the first time that we've had our chance to get our hands on any kind of Kobe Bryant gear. So, Nike started releasing the shoes. And people took L's. Okay. Then, on the 24th, after they released the initial shoe, they released the jersey. Which, I've never even seen a jersey on the sneakers app, ever. You know, typically, like, they don't even do that for Michael Jordan. You know, it, for Michael Jordan jerseys, you know, they'll have it on the website or they'll distribute it to Foot Locker and Champs and stuff like that. You know, the retailers, and the retailers will sell them. But the demand for Kobe Bryant was so high that they didn't do any of that. Basically, what they did was they let the bots come on in and suck up all the items, whether it's the shoes or the jersey. I mean, I took an L on a jersey. I'm going to repeat that. We took L's on a jersey. A jersey. Not shoes. Shoes, I can kind of understand. You know, I can understand the shoes selling out. But these items were so limited that I think Nike should have probably thought ahead and, you know, did like a raffle for them or something like that. Instead of just letting them go, you know, first come, first serve, because that's where the bots come in and suck everything up. Then, a lot of other people weren't aware that they actually had another jersey, which was a purple authentic jersey. Um, for sale on the Nike app that came out on the 27th. And that sold out super quick too. A lot of people took L's on that. But my point though is to this is that I think Nike wanted that. I think Nike cares more about their brand than they do Kobe Bryant, his fans, or even the foundation that they said that they were going to donate money to from the sales of these items. Now, they knew the demand was so high for these items, and they knew that they were going to be limited. So instead of doing raffles, everybody just came in, sucked everything up, and now everybody's angry. I think they like to do that on purpose. I think Nike cares so much about their brand that they would rather have people come in, buy it all up, and then, you know, sell them for $1,000 on eBay for a swingman jersey. A swingman jersey going for $1,000. They can't charge you $1,000 for that item, so the next best thing is to see their item with their logo selling for crazy amounts of money. That's the best thing for their brand. That's not the best thing for people who patronize Nike products or a big Kobe Bryant fan, a Laker fan, or anything like that. They're more worried about how their brand looks than they are if you're a happy customer. And a lot of people are mad at resellers. And, you know, I can kind of understand that, but it's not really the reseller's fault. I mean, reselling has been going on since the wheel and fire. 
You know what I mean? Like people sell things. This is, we live in a capitalist nation. So there's always opportunity to make money. People are going to seize it, you know, especially in these times where there's so many people unemployed and looking for work and struggling financially. But don't you think a company that rakes in billions of dollars every year is aware of that? They knew that going in. It's not like they just planned Mamba Week the week prior and boom, here you go. They had this methodically mapped out. The worst thing that Nike hates the most is when their products sit on shelves. And they use the streets and they use people's name and they use all these different tactics, you know, psychological tactics, so that their items sell out like that. And all through this pandemic, has anybody made more money than Nike? Think about it. When was the last time you could just walk into a store and buy a retro Jordan anything? It's been a long time. You know, you used to be able to, you know, the sneakers app used to be 50-50. Sometimes you would win, sometimes you would take that L. And now, like, you're pretty much guaranteed an L. Like, if you win, like, if you actually hit on the sneakers app, it's like the greatest feeling in the world now. Because it's so few and far between. Resellers are going to resell, and that's just part of the economy. That's just the way things work. But these prices are crazy. I've seen that Kobe Bryant jersey in a youth size go for like $700 on eBay. Like, come on, man. That's a little ridiculous. This jersey was 110 bucks, And the price for that authentic that they dropped to was actually pretty good at $225. $225 for an authentic NBA jersey? Not bad. I mean, Nike ain't as good as Mitchell and S, in my opinion, as far as the quality. But an authentic jersey is an authentic jersey. So, you know, for $225, they, they actually, they looked out on that price. Just a shame we couldn't get it. If Nike really wanted to remember Kobe Bryant, and they really wanted to add to his, you know, his legacy, his mystique, you know, what they should have done is if the products were so limited that they couldn't make a bunch to fulfill everybody's want for a piece of Kobe Bryant, then what they should have done is just did the raffle. Do raffles. At least give everybody an even playing field. You'd feel so much better about taking an L if you take one. If you guys plan on buying any of these items on the resale market, just know you're going to pay crazy money for them. Um, I do understand if you do decide to pay it, um, you know, like that jersey is kind of limited. The other jersey was limited. Like you're probably not going to see that again. And if you do, it's not going to be for a long time. So, I mean, like, I feel you. Um, I'm not going to. I'm not going to buy those items on resale. The prices are just too crazy. If it was reasonable, like if, you know, for that swing man, if it was like 250 you know, I'd probably buy it, you know. Or the shoes, if they were like 300 in that range, maybe a little bit less, you know, something like that. I might consider copping them, but I don't know. These prices are just crazy, man. Like, I'll wait. You know, I'll wait for them to re-release more and, you know, later down the line. And uh, hopefully I'll get my hands on something cool. But guys, here's a nice heads up for you. You can go to MitchellNS.com right now. And they're selling out, you know, pretty quickly. But there's still a lot of stock on all the Kobe Bryant jerseys. You know, from, you know, different eras from his rookie year, um, the All-Star game, all the way to the 2010 finals for sale on MitchellNS. Yeah, they're $300, $325 but they're in stock. You can actually buy them. You can just go to the website, put it in your cart, give them your information, and boom, it'll show up in the mail. You know, so that's what I did. I just went to Mitchell Ness and copped the Kobe Bryant jersey that I really, really wanted. Michael Jordan will always be one. No one's ever taken that away from him. Not LeBron, not anybody in the future. Michael Jordan is God. He's the GOAT. But Kobe Bryant's number two. And it's a shame that he's no longer here. So like I said, this is just my opinion. Like, I, you know, if you disagree with me, I understand. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Did you cop any of these items or did you take L's like everybody else? Before you guys bounce out, if you could do that thing I like and just smash that like button for me. And if you're new to the channel or haven't yet already subscribed, hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you're notified every time I drop a video on sneakers, gear, or sports related items. And until next video, peace.